G'day everyone, Disney Dave coming at you once again from Down Under. Got a very special video for you guys today. This is one I've been wanting to do for about six months or so. What I want to do is I want to go through my entire Disney movie collection. Most of these are on Blu-ray, there's a few DVDs. This collection's so big I've been collecting for the best part of about eight years now. I was lucky enough to get into the collecting game for Disney Blu-rays right at the very start. I know a lot of people have got in really late and missed out on quite a few titles. Look, the collection's grown and grown and it keeps growing and I'm continually updating it. Probably every three to six months there's a new Disney release. We go from right here to all the way just past uh, off camera. So what I want to do is I want to split this video into a few separate parts. I'm going to do a video on the animated movies, I'm going to do a video on the live action movies and I've got some documentaries there as well which I might, I might do a little video of as well at a later date. This video that you're watching right now is for the animated films. So the main bulk of this collection is made up of the Walt Disney Animation Classic Canon which is basically the 54 animated titles that have been released by Walt Disney Animation. Basically everything that's been released on Blu-ray, I've got, there's a few gaps in the collection that I'm missing that you can only get on DVD at the moment, but I've held off on buying the DVDs just in case they come out on Blu-ray one day. For example, Make My Music, Melody Time, Saludos Amigos, The Three Caballeros, and The Black Cauldron. I always walk past them on the shelves on DVD, and I've been telling myself, don't pick them up, because as soon as you pick them up, they'll come out on Blu-ray. So I've been very good and I've held off on, on buying them for some time and I'm getting really itchy now because they're starting to re-release a lot of the same titles. I'm getting the feeling they're not going to be putting these ones out on Blu-ray, which is a real shame. I'd really hope to see them uh, get the Blu-ray treatment somewhere down the line. There's a couple of straight to home video sequels that I've got in the collection. I've got some of the Disney Toon stuff. I've got the entire Pixar collection in here as well. And I have got the Tim Burton stop motion stuff and the Robert Zemeckis motion capture stuff. So we're going to go through absolutely all of that in this video today. So there's quite a bit to get through. We're going to skim through most of them, but there's a few that there's a little story, a few stories and detailings I can give you along the way. But apart from that, uh, I want to get straight into it. First, I'm going to have to knock all these figures off the shelf so that we get a nice clear shelf. I'm going to pull each shelf off at once and then just sort of go through them all as we go. Okay, so uh, let's get into it. Uh, all right, so this is the... This is just the first shelf of animated titles, so we're going to try and go through these pretty quickly. The additions of these discs that I've got, most of them, probably about 98% of these discs are the North American editions because I personally love the slipcovers, I love the artwork, and they're just so different to the stuff that we get here in Australia. The American sets also occasionally have different special features, so they will offer a little bit more content wise. I'm a sucker for special features. I'm a sucker for good packaging and a beautiful presented movie on physical copy. But there are a couple that I have picked up in the country for one reason or another, but we'll go through that as we go through all of these. I've got all the discs laid out from pretty much in order of release. There may be the occasional movie that's out of order, maybe accidentally, but also if there is a sequel to a movie, I'll place the sequel next to the original uh, film just so I can keep the franchises together. It's a little bit easier for me to find uh, the, the movies. Also, they've released quite a number of two movie collections, which include the original movie and the straight to home video sequel. So that sort of threw the chronology out of whack on the shelf anyway. First up, Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. Now this one is actually an Australian edition. Look at that, it's got the Australian logo down there. It has a slip cover. This is pretty much the only one of the classic canon that they, they released here in Australia in a slipcover. Don't know why they released this one in a slipcover and none of the others. This was my second Disney animated Blu-ray behind Pinocchio. It still holds up as one of my top releases on Blu-ray. The special features on this are absolutely incredible. Quite a few of them got ported over to the Signature Edition. I've done a video on that if you want to go and check that out. Then we have got Snow White on Signature Edition. This is the recent release, came out earlier this year. There's a few nice new special features on that, so definitely worth the double dip and looks like I'm collecting the Signature Editions now as well. Pinocchio! Alright, so this was my very first Disney Blu-ray. I've actually got the Australian edition of this. The first handful of Blu-ray releases in the States for Disney movies were region locked. 
after a couple of years, they started unlocking them and making them region free. So I was forced to buy them in the country and then I had to go and buy the slip cover later on online. If you can see the nice little effect on that slip cover, this is definitely one of my favorite slip covers of all time. They completely bypassed the Diamond Edition Pinocchio for, for one reason or another, but it's coming out on Signature Edition early next year, in a couple of months. Fantasia and Fantasia 2000. This was actually the very first one I imported from the States. Now the reason I actually imported this one from the US, well yeah, of course it was one of the first region unlocked titles. The first animated title they made region unlocked was Beauty and the Beast, which was the one that was before this, but for some reason or another, I bought that in Australia. They were releasing this in Australia as two separate movies and not in this really nice packaging. I saw pictures of it and I thought, oh, I'd really like that edition. I'd like to check out what that's all about. It was actually a toss up between this and the UK set. Now the UK set basically bunched both movies together in individual cases inside a big slip cover. So it was a debate, do I get the American one? Do I get the UK one? In the end, I went for the US edition because it's just a single case in a slip and I wanted to save on shelf space. I'm glad that I did choose the US edition because I think if I'd chosen the UK edition, that really would have dictated my entire collection because this was the one where I went, oh my Lord, I love this cover. I need to collect them all. And I went and bought slip covers for all my Australian editions of the discs just to have a uniform collection. Had I bought the UK one, I think I would have got pretty OCD about collecting the UK discs, which personally annoy me for one or two reasons. They got the only one thing I really love about them is that they've got the number of the film up in the top corner. But the thing that annoys me about that is the UK canon differs from the US canon. They omit a couple of movies that really should be in the canon and they've added one movie that shouldn't be in the canon. So I'm really happy to be collecting the canon as dictated by the US market, which is where these movies originate. The cover on this is amazing as well. I'm trying to look in the viewfinder to see if you can see that. That has got the most incredible effect on it. They don't do stuff like this anymore. Again, one of my absolute all-time favorites. I'm not gonna reveal what my favorites are because I'm gonna do a, a video of my top 10 Disney movies uh, very, very soon. Dumbo. Again, this one was an Australian release. Dumbo was actually released here probably maybe six months or so before the US, so I ended up picking that up here. Nice effect there. And last year, for some reason or another, I picked up 75th Anniversary Edition. That previous one was the 70th Anniversary Edition. This was a DMC, Disney Movie Club exclusive in the US. I've got a mate in the US who has been picking me up all the Disney Movie Club exclusives. And he said to me, uh, do you want Dumbo? They were releasing Alice in Wonderland at the time as well. And he said, I'll do them for you really cheap because he wanted the digital copy. He said, if you want the physical disc, I'll give you the physical disc and keep the digital copy. So he gave this to me really cheaply. So I thought, yeah, why not? Bambi. Now this one's an entirely American release. By this point, I was well into collecting the American releases of these discs. This was the first to feature the Disney second screen feature. Basically what the second screen app was, you could have your laptop or iPad or iPhone with you and have the second screen app synced to the movie. It would give you all this behind the scenes trivia and facts. It would show you concept art and all this kind of stuff while the movie was running. It was sort of a branch off of a previous feature which was called the Cine Explore feature, which was basically a visual commentary. So like an audio commentary, but you actually got to see the video of the people doing the commentary as well as concept art and all this other stuff. I absolutely adored the Cine Explore feature. They dumped that after three or four movies. That was absolutely wonderful. I could never get the second screen to work for some reason or other. Bambi 2, it's actually not bad. As far as the home video sequels go, this is probably one of the better ones. I originally passed on this, but then when they started releasing the double packs that included the original movie and the straight to home video sequel, while well, it said to me, you gotta complete the collection. If you're gonna have the uh, sequels to certain films, you gotta have them for all of them. The Adventures of Ichabod and Mr. Toad and Fun and Fancy Free 2 Movie Collection. These are package movies, which are made up of short uh, films. They released these during the wartime. The studio basically shut down feature production and went into producing uh, propaganda movies as well as a handful of shorts. While the war was still going or sort of as the war was wrapping up, they decided to get a bunch of shorts and stitch them together as package movies, re release them as theatricals. Four of the movies that I mentioned before that they haven't released on Blu-ray are package movies and I'm, I'm starting to worry that they'll actually get a Blu-ray release. I'm, 
I'm very surprised that this one actually did get a release. This set also includes the Reluctant Dragon, which is this really awesome documentary from the early 1940s, I think 1941, which actually took you through the Disney studio back in the 40s. For one reason or another, that's not included in the UK set, but it's here. So this really is a three movie collection. Next up, Cinderella. This was the first one they started releasing with uh, digital copies. There was quite a few releases that they put out in a gold slipcover with a little circle and you could see some of the artwork through the circle. Originally that was an option where you could buy this one or you could buy the one with the gold border. Later on in the collection, the gold border editions were the only editions you could buy and you didn't have the option of getting the one with the full beautiful art. I don't know why it really annoyed me. You'll see a couple of them very soon. But with Cinderella, you had the option of buying the full artwork one. Cinderella 2 and 3, straight to home video sequels, not great. Just have it for completest sake, basically. Alice in Wonderland. Alice in Wonderland is a story that I've always wanted to love, but never really fully loved. I appreciate the story. I love the writing in the original story, but... I've never really been able to get into this one or the live action one. Again, from the Disney Movie Club, the recent release of it, 65th anniversary. This one was the 60th anniversary. Really nothing different between the two releases. Even the cover is pretty much the same. Uh, this one was probably a bit of a waste of money, to be honest, but there it is in the collection. Peter Pan. Now, this was also another one where you could buy in two different covers. The gold cover actually didn't have it in a circle, but there was this really nice gold cover which had the shadow of Peter Pan in front of the clock. That was really gorgeous. Even at the time, I actually debated, do I get the blue border or do I get the gold one? In the end, I went for the blue one because it featured all the characters here. Peter Pan, Return to Neverland. I don't think I actually watched this one, but from what I've heard, this is actually a fairly decent straight to home video sequel. Lady and the Tramp on Diamond Edition. Lady and the Tramp 2, Scamp's Adventure. Yeah, not great. Put it on for the cousins, for the younger cousins. They didn't even enjoy that one. Sleeping Beauty, now this was the Platinum Edition. Again, this is when they were doing really nice effects on the covers. This one even has an open up cover and uh, the, the effects continue on the back there. That's an Australian release in an American slip again. I actually don't think I paid for this. I actually claim the Australian disc from the Disney Movie Rewards program that they used to do. It was the very first Disney animated Blu-ray release and I skipped it. I didn't really have that much interest in it back then uh, and I really only picked it up because it was free but I'm so glad I did. It's again one of my absolute favourites. I absolutely adore the animation in this film. Again more on that in a future video. And then this is the Diamond Edition of Sleeping Beauty. This is when they started to wean you away from the blue borders. They released this with a gold border and then the next few releases were gold border with gold silly little circle in the middle there where you can't appreciate the full artwork. So this was really the last one where they Gave you full artwork here. 101 Dalmatians. That's what I'm talking about. That annoying round border there. Even under there, it is that annoying round border. They didn't even give you the full artwork on the case there. I was talking about gold. that They, really, they started doing them in silver as well. This really annoyed me. I really just don't appreciate that artwork. 101 Dalmatians 2. Patches London Adventure. Again, another straight to... A uh, home video sequel that is just complete trash. This was one that they strangely made available to the Disney Movie Club exclusively for a couple of months before they released it to the general public. I ended up getting it, I think, on eBay, this one. Sword in the Stone. This is one of a series of films where they did really terrible restorations on them. I wouldn't call them restorations, I would call them destorations, basically. They went over, they added this degraining effect, they smoothed the whole image out, and they got rid of all the grain, but while they got rid of all the film grain, they got rid of all the detail that is in the animation. The restoration on this is absolute trash, and I hope that if they ever release this again, that they'll re-release it with a proper restoration, because what they did to this movie is absolute sacrilege. Usually I'm not one to complain about these things, but what they did to this one and, and a couple of others, which we'll talk about down the line, was just really unforgivable. Jungle Book, again, annoying round thing, annoying round thing. The Australian and UK releases of this actually came out about six months before the States, and they came out with the full artwork. Jungle Book 2, again, as far as the straight-to-video uh, sequels go, this one's not too bad. Aristocrats, 
I love this movie. This is an incredibly underrated movie. The soundtrack is absolutely awesome to this. This really cool jazz blues kind of soundtrack. That's my jam. And uh, yeah, couldn't recommend that one enough if you haven't seen it. Robin Hood. This is another one that was completely destroyed by that annoying degraining technique. This is another one that looks terrible. The Many Adventures of Winnie the Pooh. This is actually a package film. This stitches together a series of Winnie the Pooh shorts that had been released uh, quite a few years earlier and they turned it into a feature film and added it into the canon. Now this is a strange release because the slipcover of this didn't last long at all. I mean, the first pressing was very, very small of this. I'm assuming Disney sort of figured that there wasn't going to be a huge market for it. So they only printed not too many slipcovers. I mean, people had pre-ordered this, receiving it from Amazon without a slip on the week of release. I was just amongst the lucky crowd who managed to pick it up with a slip. I think the entire uh, thing went into the vault for a little while. I think you can get it again now, but it went out of production for a while. And the original run of this came with a kite. Winnie the Pooh, a very merry poo year. It's all right, I talk about this one a little bit in my Christmas video, which I've just uploaded last week. So take a look at that one if you want to know a little bit more about a very merry poo year. Winnie the Pooh, springtime with Rue. Eh, even as far as Winnie the Pooh movies go, this is pretty average, but it's uh, really, the demographic has really, really young kids for this one. This one came with a gift too, actually. It's a little mobile to put a, a, above a crib, a cot. And of course, Winnie the Pooh. This is one that uh, actually comes much, much later in the canon. This is the very last traditionally animated Disney film up to this point. Yeah, again, this is at a sketchy release. It never came out on Blu-ray in Australia, and it came out on Blu-ray in the UK quite a bit later. I actually love this. I adored this movie. It's beautiful. And they just didn't market it very well. People didn't know it was out there. They weren't aiming for the right demographic, and it really did kill traditional animation after John Lasseter came back and revived it. Did this one come with a gift? This one did come with a gift. Came with like a little pin the tail on Eeyore thing. Very weird, I'm not too sure why, but all the Pooh releases come with a little gift. Tigger movie. Now this actually comes way before Winnie the Pooh, but I've got it at the end because again, OCD Dave wanted all the Winnie the Pooh movies to look nice on the shelf. Winnie the Pooh, Winnie the Pooh, Winnie the Pooh, Winnie the Pooh, and then Tigger movie at the end. I actually like the Tigger movie, this was good. I think this came to theaters here in Australia, but it was produced as a, as a straight to home video release. There's quite a, a few Pooh movies that haven't had a release on Blu-ray at all yet that I really like them to bring out, but that's all of them for now. The Rescuers and The Rescuers Down Under. Never really liked these movies. For some reason, I can never get into them. Of course, as a good Aussie kid, I had The Rescuers Down Under on VHS, and I watched that quite a few times. Fox and the Hound and The Fox and the Hound 2. I think this is the first two movie collection they released. Fox and the Hound is one they just I don't think they cared too much about it because no restoration work at all on this one. They didn't even go to the effort of doing that stupid grain removal thing. For some annoying reason, they just did not do a restoration on this at all and it looks terrible. It's got flickering, it's got filmic spots. You can tell they went back to a really terrible source for this. It's just not a very good looking release. They are actually re-releasing the first movie on its own uh, early in the new year, just like they did with Mulan and Pocahontas. So it'd be interesting to see if that's a new transfer on that disc. I would bet, knowing Disney, it's probably not, but this really deserves more because it's quite a nice movie. The Great Mouse Detective. I grew up knowing this one as Basil the Great Mouse Detective. That's what it's called here in Australia and I think in the UK. This one doesn't have any embossing on the slipcover. This was the first one they did with no embossing. It really annoyed me at the time. It still annoys me now. Let's not think about it. Oliver and Company. Eh. It's got Billy Joel in it, and the songs are good, but the movie is not so great. This is sort of rounding out that era of Disney animation that wasn't great. And now we get into the Disney Renaissance. This is where Disney animation really picked up again, of course, with The Little Mermaid. Oh, how good is that? That is an awesome effect on that. This is the 3D edition, of course. This is actually an odd 3D release that doesn't have a lenticular cover. For some reason, I didn't pick up the 2D edition. For some of the later ones, I've got the 2D and the 3D. I, I sort of regret that because the art on the 2D edition is beautiful, but I'm sure they re-release this soon. Little Mermaid. Ariel's beginning in Little Mermaid 2, Return to the Sea. Straight to DVD movies, what can I say? Beauty and the Beast. 
This is the 3D edition. This is American edition. Uh, the first edition, I should say, is actually this one. This is one of my favorite slipcovers as well. Got this really nice glitter. This was the last of the Australian editions that I bought. I think I was impatient, so I picked up the Australian release when it came out. This was the first release that they made region free. So again, annoying, I had to go back and buy the slipcover for this. So then, yeah, about a year later, they re-released it on 3D. That's actually a really nice 3D conversion on that. So yeah, there's a case of having the 2D and the 3D. And then again, they've just re-released it this year, 25th anniversary edition, part of the uh, signature collection. That's actually a really nice slip cover. They've gone back to doing some nice effects on the slip. A really amazing special features on this one that they left off on this. There's a couple of really nice new special features on that release there too. So it really did justify a double dip. Straight to VHS. Uh, sequel, Midcore, because it takes place during the middle of the, the, the original movie, uh, The Enchanted Christmas. Again, I talk more about this in my Christmas video if you want to check that out. Ah, oh, Aladdin! Again, another one of those annoying round things. Again, as I said, they started doing them in silver. Really nice effects on that though. This is one people were waiting for for so long. This was the very last Diamond Edition that they put out. Seven years after they started doing the Diamond Editions. And this has been released in the UK and in Australia for about five years. This was a case where I had to just put all the compulsions behind me and go, no, don't buy it. Don't buy the Australian release because the American release is going to be better. And it, it turned out it was because there's some really nice special features on this that aren't on the Australian and UK releases. Aladdin and the King of Thieves and the Return of Jafar. This is one that they made exclusive to the Disney Movie Club. This is one that just never released to general sale for some reason. So I ended getting up this one through my Disney Movie Club buddy. They also released this in Australia too, I think. One of my absolute favorites, The Lion King. It's a very lackluster release. This is when they just started putting less effort into their releases. It's been a steady decline since. I was really hoping on a really good behind the scenes documentary like the other features had. This really has nothing on it. I think you could access the classic DVD special features on their, what did they call it? Blu-ray Disney Live feature, where you could hook your Blu-ray player up to the internet, where you could stream the old special features. Because I'm in Australia, I couldn't access the American server. I could never watch those features. And anyway, they have discontinued that service, so there is no way anyone can go back and use that service now to watch the special features, which is really, really annoying, which is what I just detest about the whole digital thing and the signature collections, putting the old special features as digital only. I can just see somewhere down the line they're gonna go, sorry, you can't access this anymore. I think they actually released the 3D and the 2D at the same time, but because I had been collecting both 2D and 3D of the previous titles, yeah, I bought the 3D first and then I went back and bought the 2D. Lion King 2, Simba's Pride. This is actually a really good uh, straight to VHS sequel it was back in the day. And I really enjoyed this growing up. I really loved this one. Lion King one and a half, I really can't say the same thing. It's actually called the Lion King 3 here in Australia and the UK, but I actually prefer it being called The Lion King One and a Half. Again, it's a mid, it's a mid-call. It's another mid-call where it takes place during the first Lion King movie. Next up, we have a couple of releases of Pocahontas. This was the first release they did where they paired it with the Straight to Home Video sequel. A lot of people didn't really like that. And uh, lucky for them, the Disney Movie Club only just recently released the movie on its own without the uh, second movie. Look, I'm not going to complain about it because I get two movies for the price of one. So even if you don't want the second movie, you got it there for free. Beautiful artwork. Who cares? You're getting more for your for your buck. But now you do have the option to buy it just on its own. Hunchback of Notre Dame. This is another one that's a two movie collection. The sequel is terrible. I got through about five minutes of it and stopped watching it. The animation on it is dreadful. Same with Pocahontas. The, uh, the animation on that was terrible. Hercules, this is one I was waiting for for so long and they released this at the back end of, uh, of all these releases. This is one of the last ones that they put out, brand new. They used to do these batch releases where they put out four or five titles at once and this was amongst that really last batch of releases there. Mulan, that is the Disney Movie Club version, which is just a single movie, of course. Previous to that, they'd brought out the two movie collection. Again, people complained. I didn't mind too much because by this point, I was collecting the original and the sequel as well. Tarzan, this came out in the same batch as Hercules and this is one I was waiting for for so long. This is one I loved as a kid. Uh, this is one they actually didn't release with the sequel for some reason, same with Hercules. I think it's because the sequels were made as pilots for the TV series and for some reason, that's why they didn't put them on the Blu-ray. Now this is an odd one, Dinosaur. 
Yes, Australian release, no slipcover at all. Strangely enough, it's never got a slipcover anywhere. I think this was actually the first of the animated titles that wasn't a classic title to be released on Blu-ray. This is what Disney used to do with all their Blu-rays, this terrible packaging here, and they never did slipcovers back then. So to this point, there has not been a release of Dinosaur with a slipcover. Now the UK canon, Amits Dinosaur. So if you're buying the UK Classics line that's out at the moment, this is not part of that line. I think it's because this movie isn't actually fully animated. The character animated and the backgrounds are filmed. They're actual film plates. They went and they filmed in the jungle, in a forest, and then they put the animated characters over the top. So this was the first film to really use animated characters but wasn't fully computer animated. In its place in the UK canon is The Wild, which isn't even a Disney animation at all. It was distributed by Disney, but the animation was done by some other studio. And the last one on the first shelf, this is taking ages, we've got Emperor's New Groove and Kronk's New Groove. As far as covers go, pretty, pretty bad. And uh, I never really cared for either of these movies. I know a lot of people love the first one. I never really cared for it. Magic. All right, we're on to the second shelf now. This is where stuff gets a little bit generic and there's no need to really talk about these things so we can really whiz through. Atlantis, The Lost Empire and Atlantis Milo's Return. I remember this being the last Disney animated movie I saw at the cinemas for a very long time, for many, many years. I just started to lose interest because the, the creative output wasn't great from the studio around this era and I just sort of lost interest. As a kid, I think I enjoyed this but I didn't enjoy it as much as I thought and even watching it back now, I don't really like it that much. Lilo and Stitch. To this day, here's a secret, I've actually not watched Lilo and Stitch. This is a two movie collection, so you got the movie and the sequel as well. Treasure Planet, I really don't like this movie. This is just one that's just, yeah, I, I, can't, I couldn't get into this one. Brother Bear and Brother Bear 2, I actually love Brother Bear. This is the rose amongst a bunch of thorns, this one. This is actually a really beautiful movie. I really love Brother Bear. It's one of the only great films from this era of Disney animation. Home on the Range. <laughs> This is the movie we can blame for the death of traditional animation. Michael Eisner blamed this movie, said no one wants to go and see traditional animated movies anymore because look how bad Home on the Range did. No, you know why Home on the Range did really bad at the box office? Because it's a crap movie. Chicken Little 3D. Yeah, not, not a great movie. This was the first completely animated Disney film and was released in 3D. Same with Meet the Robinsons, not great. This is a 3D edition as well. Not a huge fan of this one either. Bolt, 3D edition. Uh, I didn't mind Bolt, Bolt was actually okay. Not a bad movie. Princess and the Frog, I absolutely love this movie. This is when John Lasseter had taken over the animation department after Michael Eisner had left the company and they produced this gorgeous, traditionally animated movie. And look, uh, they just didn't market it very well. It didn't do well at the theaters. And again, traditional animation died after this one and then they released Winnie the Pooh the year after. I really wish they'd continued on with, with at least one or two traditionally animated movies here or there because this really proved how gorgeous 2D animation could be in uh, in this day and age. Tangled 3D, I love Tangled so much! Oh my lord! This is when I really started to get back into seeing Disney movies at the cinemas. Absolutely love Tangled so much. Love it more than Frozen. Sorry Frozen fans, not a huge Frozen fan. We'll talk about that more in a following video as well. Wreck it Ralph, I'm gonna wreck him! I think that's what he says. Yeah, I don't mind Wreck-It Ralph, it's actually not bad. It's a bit of fun. This is the 3D edition. Bit of fun, not the best, not the worst. Yeah, it's, it's enjoyable. Frozen. Yeah, not a huge fan of Frozen. Now this is another really weird release. They actually pressed the first two pressings of this disc before it was even released. Usually they'd do one pressing, see how well it sells. If it sells well, they'll do a second pressing. This movie did so well at the box office, they did two pressings straight away. Now the first pressing they did, the slipcover, I don't think you can see it from there, but it has this really gorgeous foil like effect on it and I also pressed one which was just a matte cover without the effect. It was really a lucky dip which version you got. People had ordered this from Amazon, some people were getting the foil effect, some people were getting the matte cover. People were going to their local stores, some stores had the foil effect, some had the matte cover. I was just so lucky and I wound up with the foil cover, it's absolutely beautiful. But another thing is, this is such a weird release, they produce so many of these 
that quality control took a massive dip and uh, the glue they used, they either didn't use enough glue or they used a terrible glue. This is a universal problem. A lot of people had this problem of the slip cover actually peeling away. Terrible, terrible glue they used on that. And I really need to get around to taping that down with some sort of double-sided tape because that just keeps coming apart. Big Hero 6, oh my lord, I love this too. So much fun. Bit of a different movie. It's actually based on a Marvel comic, a Marvel like anime manga comic. And that's a really cool film. I absolutely love that. I really hope they do a sequel to that someday in the future. All right, now we get on to another weird one. Zootopia. Of course, the US release is called Zootopia in the US and in Australia. This is a 3D edition from the US. But in the UK, they renamed it to Zootropolis. I think it was a zoo or something in Germany called Zootopia. There was a copyright on the name Zootopia. So they named it Zootropolis in the UK. I think in Germany it's called Zoomania or something. So it's one of those really quirky little things. It's not just a title that changes. Every time they mention the name Zootopia in the movie, they've overdubbed it to Zootropolis. Every time you see like a Zootopia billboard, it's changed to Zootropolis. I wanted both versions of the movie because it's just a really quirky little thing. So I'm really happy to have both versions of that movie represented in the collection. I also picked up, I think this was actually a freebie from uh, my friends at the Walt Disney Company in Australia. This is uh, Zootopia, this is the Australian release, it's still in the shrink wrap. But they do these things with these movies where from different territories they change a certain character. So the news anchor in this movie was, uh, was it a moose or something in the American release, a corgi in the UK release and a koala in the Australian. So that's worthy enough to just to keep the Australian edition in my collection. So that's the entire classic canon that's been released. Of course, Moana is out and that'll be out on Blu-ray probably in about four to six months. From this point on, we have got short film collections. This has got quite a few short films. No really, really classic ones. They're mostly shorts from sort of 80s, 90s and more modern day. Mickey's Christmas Carol, again, talk more about this in my Christmas video, check it out if you'd like. This is another one of those titles where they went too far with uh, trying to get rid of grain and it looks absolutely terrible, very, just a terrible release of this movie, it looks just gross. Mickey's Once Upon a Christmas and Mickey's Twice Upon a Christmas, again, Christmas video if you want to know a little bit more about this. First one's really great, second one, not so much. Mickey, Donald, Goofy, The Three Musketeers, such a weird release. I don't know why they put this one out over something like the Goofy movie or even the Black Cauldron or any of the final, you know, classic canon that needs to be released. I don't know why they put this one out. I didn't really want it, but uh, completer's sake, had to have it. Then we get on to some of the Tinkerbell movies. Really nice effect on her wings there. Tinkerbell, The Lost Treasure. This is actually an Australian one with, with a slipcover. For some reason, they brought this one out with a slipcover in Australia. The only one of the Tinkerbell ones that had a slipcover in Australia, don't know why. But it's got that really nice effect on there too. So I picked that up in the country. Tinkerbell, Great Fairy Rescue. Secret of the Wings, 3D. This was released as Tinkerbell and the Secret of the Wings in Australia. That's the Australian release that says Tinkerbell and the Secret of the Wings, but in America it's just called Secret of the Wings. Don't know why they dropped that off the title. I would have preferred it to say Tinkerbell on the slip. That's the only one they actually released on 3D for some reason. Pirate Fairy. Again, no, that's an American release, but in Australia called Tinkerbell and the Pirate Fairy. I think they'd announced the 3D release of this and then it just it just never came out for some reason. And the last Tinkerbell one so far, they went back and they added Tinkerbell to the title. Tinkerbell and the Legend of the Never Beast. Don't know what happened there. Again, I would consistently say this, Disney is not great with consistency. Prep and Landing and Prep and Landing Naughty vs. Nice, a couple of nice Christmas shorts. Again, you guessed it, Christmas video if you want to learn a little bit more about that. No slip cover on that! Oh my lord. Yeah, I ordered this quite a bit late. I only ordered this in this year. It's been out for a few years and slip covers run out by now. I couldn't be bothered going back and trying to get the slip for that, to be honest, at this point. James and the Giant Peach is another one that I never got a slip cover for. Again, I was too late to the punch with this one. I originally, wasn't one, I didn't want to collect the um, stop motion films, but I decided later on I did. Nightmare Before Christmas 3D. Now, I actually have a 2D edition of this. I don't know where it is. This is really nice in 3D. Again, Christmas movie. Where should you go to check out more about that? Christmas Carol. Absolutely love this. Again, in 3D, stunning. One of my favorite Christmas movies. Again, where do you go? Frank and Weenie. I actually haven't watched this one yet. I don't know, I just kept putting it off. And now we get onto some of the Pixar movies, which is very exciting. Pixar short film collections, volume one and volume two. No slipcovers. Bought these in Australia. The American discs were locked. 
So I just bought them from, actually the American disc of the first one I think is locked, the second one might not be, but I just bought them in the country because it was easier. Then we've got Toy Story 1, Toy Story 2, and Toy Story 3, all bought in Australia. This was a case of I was too impatient to get these movies on Blu-ray. I needed them right away and didn't order them from the States. I kind of regret it now because I don't have slip covers on them. Although, yeah, I actually, I bought the 3D editions in a box set. I'll show you that one in a minute. So I do have them in a slip cover of sorts. It just doesn't fit on the shelf. Slips for Toy Story of Terror and Toy Story of the Time Forgot. Two of the Toy Story tunes, like short TV special things they did, they're all right. A Bug's Life, again, one I bought in Australia and uh, never bothered to get a slipcover for. I uh, love this movie so much. I haven't watched it for a long time. I really should go back and revisit it. Monsters, Inc. 3D. Oh, my Lord, I love this one too. Absolutely fantastic. And I love this in 3D. This is, this is one of a few ones that they went back and they brought out in 3D many years after they'd been released. And they stopped doing that because they apparently weren't making money. Monsters University, hate the cover of this. I really loved the cover from the 2D edition, but I didn't want to buy two, so I got, st got stuck with this terrible cover on the 3D. Finding Nemo in 3D. This has to be, I, I have to say, this is, I reckon, the best 3D film I've ever seen. I've got over 100 3D Blu-rays. This is the best of the lot. This is so immersive and wonderful. The underwater sequences are gorgeous. All these bubbles just floating and the depth is incredible. It's got more depth than any other 3D movie I've ever seen. I've got Finding Dory in the mail. It's probably going to be here within the next couple of days. I'll do an update video when I put that into the collection. The Incredibles. I don't love this one as much as everyone. I loved it as a kid. Um, it's not one that's held up for me as a classic, but I'm looking forward to the sequel. Again, bought it in Australia, didn't bother getting a slip. Cars in 3D. This is when they stopped doing the lenticular covers again. They've gone back to it now, as you saw with Zootopia. And Cars 2 in 3D, so there's a lenticular cover there. Cars Tunes. I only really went and picked this one up for completer's sake. I bought this many years after it was released and was surprised to find that I actually got it in a slipcover. I wasn't originally going to get these, but I just had to because they're a bit of stupid fun. Planes. This one's in 3D. Second one, Planes, Fire and Rescue, they didn't release on Blu-ray in 3D. I uh, went to the cinemas at 3D. Wall-E, love this movie so much. I really need to watch it again. Again, Australian set, no slipcover. Then we've got a steelbook of Ratatouille in 3D. Now, they never released the 3D version of Ratatouille in uh, America or Australia. So I imported this from Zavi in the UK. And I went for the steelbook edition uh, only because... It's the closest I could get to a one in a slipcover. Up in 3D and up in 2D, uh, Australian edition. Again, another one that they released in the slipcover just randomly. Brave. I love this movie. So underrated. Absolutely stunning. Amazing animation. The concept artwork for this is beautiful. Brave. Get on it. 3D. Stunning. Inside Out. Now this is one, conversely, I just couldn't get into. I've watched it twice, I can't get into it. Um, I know a lot of people love it. People are saying it's the best Pixar movie for years, but I prefer Brave over it, to be honest. And to be honest, I prefer The Good Dinosaur over, over Inside Out, but uh, there you go. So yeah, Good Dinosaur is in the collection as well. Uh, 3D edition, this is when they, they went back to doing lenticular covers after they dropped them for a while. They actually dropped 3D for a while, Disney, and now they've decided to go back and do it again. Okay, well, that's the main bulk of the collection. I'm just going to show you a couple of other random little bits and pieces here as well that are part of the collection. Um, these three I want to show Mary Poppins, Bed Knobs and Broomsticks, and Pete's Dragon, of course. These three are live-action films, but they have a little bit of animation in them. So it's worthy to point out. I'll talk about them more in the, uh, the live-action video. I've also got Mickey Mouse Season 1. I don't know if they released season two. I don't think they did on DVD, but I picked that one up anyway. Uh, I've got two Christmas compilation discs here. Donald Duck's Christmas Favourites and Celebrate Christmas with Mickey, Donald and Friends. Talk more about them in the Christmas video. I have this on DVD. It's the Fantasia Anthology. I went and bought this on eBay because I found out that the, um, that the Fantasia Blu-ray actually omitted quite a few really interesting special features, behind the scenes stuff. And look, it's one of my all-time favorite Disney movies. So I had to go back. This is a US set, yeah. But I had to go back and pick this one up because there was some stuff on here that I really wanted to check out. I got it really cheaply on eBay. Here's that Toy Story 1, 2, and 3 3D box set that I'm talking about. 
So it's nice. I'm, I'm content that I do have the Toy Story movies in a slip box, but it, I don't think it fits on that shelf properly. So it sits down in this little section down the bottom here. And now I've actually got a handful of uh, the Zabby release steel books. I um, kept, kept them nice and I didn't want to recollect the entire uh, collection of movies again in steelbook form. So I just picked up uh, some of my favorite movies and some of the nicest steelbooks there. And of course, again, uh, we have uh, Fantasia as well. Well, that brings us to the end of my uh, complete animated movie collection. That was a long video, I'm sorry. Well, I hope you've enjoyed the video and make sure to check out my second part, which will be all my live action films. I'll upload that within the next week or two, so make sure to check that out. I promise that'll be a shorter video. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you're a big fan of Disney, Pixar, Marvel and Star Wars, this is the channel for you. So hit subscribe after the jump and uh, join me in the future. And I really do hope I will see you again very soon. Until then guys, take care and I hope you have a magical day.